subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. The iPhone 10 versus Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus full comparison video. Now, before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that this video is going to be quite long and detailed. So if that's not your thing or you don't got time for that, I did time code it down below in the description area where you can go to the sections that matter most to you. But if you want the full rundown, I suggest you watch the video in its entirety. So it's the camera reimagined here on the Galaxy S9 Plus. And over here, it's the first all screen. Well, we got the notch, so it's not fully all screen. iPhone 10 here, which is the better buy? Let's begin with specs. All right, so quick specs refresh for the iPhone 10, 5.8 inch OLED display, 12 megapixel dual camera at 4K 60 at the maximum resolution, three gigabytes of RAM on board here with an Apple A11 CPU. It is fast, 2716 milliamp hour battery and this thing weighs in at 174 grams and you get IP 67 water resistance. It comes in capacities of 64 gigs at 999 and for 1149 you get four times the storage at 256 gigs which is the model I have here. Taking it over to the Galaxy S9 Plus the specs that matter here is a 6.2 inch Super AMOLED for our 2K display here. This goes up to 2960 by 1440. It's at 1080 out of the box. 12 megapixel dual camera on the rear. One's a telephoto lens that has a variable aperture on the single lens, and that one will do f1.5 to f2.4, a six gigabytes of RAM with a Snapdragon 845 or an Exynos 9810 octa-core CPU, and this has a 3500 milliamp hour battery, and this thing weighs in at just over 188 grams. So this is a little bit of a heavier phone, but also has a more spacious and wide display. They both have very similar cameras on the rear. Let's get into their design differences now. So I forgot to mention on the S9 Plus, you actually do get IP68, so it's a little bit better than the iPhone 10 when it comes to durability, when it comes to rain and getting it wet and stuff like that. Also, you're gonna get this phone at 64 gigs across the board in three different colors, coral blue. You get the lilac purple, which I have here in the smaller edition of the S9. And you can get this in gray, depending on the market you're in, and also midnight black. All 64 gig models start at 800 39 bucks so undercutting the iphone by about 170 bucks so that's quite a bit expandable memory up to 400 gigs let's talk about design if you decide to go with apple's baby here the iphone 10 you are going to get a very well balanced design when it comes to you know width to weight to height it's a pretty good balance i do think it's a little bit heavier than it should have been but at the same time some people will say that you know the heavier makes it actually more premium feeling which i can agree with you there but i do like when a, a smaller phone is lighter they could have saved the heaviness for the upcoming plus edition so it's a little bit heavier than say your iphone 8 or say your iphone 7 that was super light and fast and speedy before it but that definitely gives it a little bit of premium you get stainless steel around the edges and you get a new vertical camera definitely signifying this is a different iPhone. This is not your classic iPhone. People will know it's an iPhone 10 based on that notch up at the top as well. There's a lot of copycat Android manufacturers now bringing out notch phones. So, you know, I think Apple just did this because they didn't know how to make it all screen just yet. So this is just kind of like the middle way into the all screen. So we had bezels, now we're in between getting to an all-screen design and evolution, and we have a notch. So you're going to have to deal with the notch if you do get this device. But overall, it's a really nice balance, and it feels kind of just right in the hand. So that's what you get with the iPhone 10 when it comes to design. Also, keep in mind, you do get a pretty thick camera hump if you do decide to buy this phone. But switches, the power button here on the right, as well as doubles as a Siri button, is very large here, so that's easy to press, but you do have to do some two button action to turn this phone off, but you get used to it, no big deal right there. So that's your iPhone 10 in terms of design. Now, if you decide to go with S9 Plus here, this is a refinement over the S8. It takes some cues from the Note 8 and brings a vertical camera here that was basically the same one that was horizontal on the Note 8. You get this shiny blue color, or the shiny lilac color. It's a little bit wider than the iPhone 10, so you're definitely getting a wider, kind of fatter phone here if you go with the S9 Plus, but it definitely gives you a feeling that you got a little bit more for your money just because you really did. You get more real estate with this phone. And because the iPhone 10 has an 81.6-ish screen-to-body ratio, and this one has an 84.2, 
you're basically getting more screen on the S9 Plus, not just more real estate, but actually more closer to like an all screen design, even though you would think that, you know, well, the iPhone 10 goes all the way to the bottom. But if you're paying attention here, there's borders all the way around the edges. So technically speaking, from a technical standpoint, the S9 Plus is a full, a closer to a full screen design than the iPhone 10. But that's besides the question. What else do you get? You get a weighty 189 grams. So uh, this makes the S9 Plus feel a little bit more premium than the S8 Plus before it. And you get some nice sides. These are really like premium looking sides here on the device. They definitely match the back shininess very well here for this device and you get this nice flat camera design. So that's what you're gonna get from the Samsung device. Both are excellent designs, I feel like. The notch is questionable on this phone, but you could say that the Galaxy S9's bezel at the top is questionable on the one at the bottom because we're all looking for an all-screen design. So really, it's gonna come down to your personal preference. If I had to choose one right here, I think I kind of like the design on the iPhone 10 a little bit better because even though it technically doesn't have as most of an all-screen design, in person and practice, it actually looks closer to an all screen design. Let's talk about build quality. So what matters when it comes to the build? Now, what I mean by this section is I'm talking about scratches. I'm talking about how does this phone hold up in a case? And uh, what does it act like in terms of its durability on the day to day? Well, the iPhone 10 scratches quite easily on a stainless steel. You're not gonna see it here on camera. It's too fine to be pulled up here from the camera I'm using right now. So you're not gonna see it, but I do have scratches all the way around the stainless steel already the glass on the rear also has some nicks in it also you're not gonna be able to see them but i do have some nicks in the iphone 10's glass so that is an issue there and the front glass on the iphone 10 will scratch you know pretty easily if you don't put a screen protector on it so you know while i think that those little things are what comes with the territory when you get a you know all glass phone this phone on the whole i feel like it's a phone that always needs a case on it unless you're really just willing to take the chance and pay apple like 500 bucks to get this thing fixed if you do crack it so while it, it does feel durable don't feel like cheap or anything like that nowhere near that it's a thousand dollar phone it definitely feels like it's fragile it feels like it's something that needs to be babied that's the iphone 10 i feel like in terms of its build quality but in terms of just sheer like premium feel it feels a1 top notch all right, so let's talk the Galaxy S9 Plus's build. Now, this phone also feels quite similar in the hand when it comes to just its glass feel as well as its premium construction as the iPhone 10. However, those sides, some stainless steel sides on the iPhone 10 definitely feel more premium than the sides on the S9 Plus. The S9 Plus, even though it's a heavier phone on paper, it kind of feels a little bit, you know, like it's better distributed across the body. So it kind of doesn't feel as heavy because, you know, you're cramming more weight into a smaller body. So you feel that weight more on the iPhone 10. That's the best way I could describe it. It's more, it's better balanced and distributed on this device. So the build quality on the rear though, you know, this glass can get nicked up just like the iPhone 10. Personally, I just got this phone not too long ago, so I don't have any scratches yet, but I did contain a scratch on the front of this device. It has Corning Gorilla Glass 5, but it's still got a scratch already. And, you know, based on my usage with the S8 Plus, this phone should hold up pretty well, but also again, it's another phone that needs to be babied. It's another one that I think needs to be in a case and needs a screen protector. If you're gonna rock it solo, you are taking a huge chance with a huge all glass on the front and a huge all glass on the back. Also that edge display makes it quite easy to crack if you do hit it. So that's one benefit of the iPhone 10, not having an edge display helps it from not, you know, if you drop it, not cracking it too bad. Cause if you hit one of these corner of the edges on the S9, it's over with. So basically in terms of build quality, I do think I like the S9 Plus's build quality just a little bit better because I found that the iPhone 10 scratches easier than the Galaxy series of phones. So I would go for the S9 Plus when it comes to build quality. All right, so let's talk about the display on the iPhone 10. we'll begin. The iPhone 10 is an OLED display sourced by Samsung. We already know this and tuned for accuracy and color, you know, calibration by Apple themselves. You know, if they really had the choice, they wouldn't have chose Samsung to make their display, but they know that Samsung is the best when it comes to this so why not but they had to have their own take on it and they made the OLED display it kind of looks like an LCD display I got to be honest with you you know you expect to get an OLED display that just zingy just punches out at you and if you were thinking about getting an iPhone 10 and you think that's going to happen 
it's not happening here. This device is going to look very similar to an LCD display in terms of the color accuracy. Now, granted, of course, it's OLED, so it still has deeper blacks. The colors are still slightly more vivid than the iPhone 8 Plus, for example. But if you go with the iPhone 10, don't expect it to punch out at you like a you know Galaxy series, like a OnePlus 5T, for example. It's just not going to do it. It's not going to do it at all. Now, over here on the S9 Plus, that's a totally different story. This phone has the best display ever rated in this period on a smartphone, and for good reason. You can change this display to go all the way up to, you know, 2K resolution, whereas the iPhone 10 doesn't quite hit that, but it also has 529 pixels per inch. The iPhone 10 is under 500, so it's a sharper display, a bigger display, better rated, and it also has the ability to tweak it, and you could change the modes here. So in terms of display, if you want color accuracy, you got to get the iPhone. If you're a photographer and you don't want to see like colors that don't look super realistic, then then you definitely don't want the S9 Plus. You want the iPhone 10. But if you want to display for content consumption, consuming media, as well as taking pictures that just stand out and you're ready to go ahead and share them without doing any editing, I feel like the S9 is the phone for you. This display is just phenomenal. And uh, so is the iPhone 10s. But again, Finally, it just comes down to that right there. But if you want pure sharpness, you want the S9 Plus. Again, if you want better skin tones and stuff like that, realism, you want the iPhone 10. Personally, if I had a choice, I would probably, if I only had one phone, I'd probably go with the S9 Plus because of the tweakability of this display. Even though I might get a super saturated display, I can quickly go into settings and change it to look more closer to an iPhone 10. So I think the level of control around this display makes it the better choice for me. Now, when it comes to watching videos, both of these display will present you a great video experience until you pull out the full screen, that's when a notch tends to get in the way of the iPhone 10, and that becomes quite annoying when watching videos. This is one of the only like major annoyances I really have with the iPhone 10 and reading when the reader mode cuts into my text. But going over here on the Galaxy S9 Plus, if you're to watch a display or a video on this display, you're gonna have a more immersive experience. However, the S9 Plus is not also without its faults. Let me go into a different video here. This phone also has its faults as well. Like when you zoom all the way in, it cuts into your content as well. So you'll see this in just a second. So when I cut in, you see how the Note 8 is in the frame and then I pull it out and it's out of the frame. That happens here a lot on the S9 Plus, but you get a bigger canvas and you get a little more deeper blacks as well as a little bit more zingy colors. So I think the better movie watching and video watching experience is definitely the Galaxy phone. All right, so let's talk about software. Well, you know what you get with the iPhone 10. You get iOS 11, but you also get this new gesture-based interface, which is definitely gonna take some getting used to if you're not used to this, you know, gesture-based. So you gotta kind of swipe up to go to your apps, swipe away to go out, and it's pretty easy and intuitive once you get used to it, but if you're just like wanna be comfortable, you want your home button, you definitely are gonna wanna like the S9 Plus here. Now, in terms of software updates, the iPhone, 10 is definitely going to be updated much longer and much quicker than the S9 Plus. That's guarantee because of the fragmentation of Android. So if you're a person who likes your OS updates, you like your security, you want the iPhone 10 here. And if you don't really care about, you know, tweaking your phone and changing things and you just want a simple to use day-to-day -day phone, you want the iPhone 10. You're really going to like this. Animations are slick and smooth. It's got a nice refresh rate. The touch response has no lag. I mean, it's a very very quick iPhone here in iPhone 10, as it should be for the money you're going to pay for this device. Getting a little bit of mistaps there. That wasn't no lag. I just had a mistap. Don't say that was lag. You know that wasn't lag. So over here on the Galaxy S9 Plus, when it comes to software, we get TouchWiz or Samsung Experience version 9.0. Let's go down to software information 9.0 and you get Android 8.0 Oreo, which has done wonders for this device. It's now much snappier than it was on the 7.0. Now, the S9 Plus was never on that, but the Galaxies before it with Android Nougat weren't quite as snappy as this Android Oreo. And this new touch was even better than it was before when it comes to being light. Now, we're not going to talk about all the features here. We'll be here for the rest of our lives. But the Galaxy has so much features that you're going to have this phone for months and you're still going to be finding things on this device. It's just so loaded to the gills with features. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. But at the same time, that can complex your life a little bit. So you got to think about this. Simplicity or freedom? Simplicity or freedom? 
secure. Well, they're both very secure, so we're not going to go there. But basically, that's what it is. Simplicity or freedom. Samsung doesn't care how you customize your phone. Apple does. It's their it's their software. You're going to play by their rules or don't get an iPhone. It's as simple as that. All right, so let's talk the performance differences. So these phones are actually very close in performance. However, if you want a phone that is going to be a true, you know, video editing powerhouse or, you know, just a better gamer, you want the iPhone 10. In day-to-day -day tasks, the animations can be faster looking on the Galaxy S9 Plus. So if you want, you know, just single core, basic, light stuff, you don't care about, you know, video rendering and all that stuff, then the Galaxy S9 should be on par, if not look a little faster sometimes than the iPhone 10. But the iPhone 10 is going to give you a smoother look. So I feel like it's a little bit smoother looking with just the way it feels when it comes to in touch latency and like input. So it just looks a little smoother, but the Galaxy S9 is much better improvement over the Galaxy S8 Plus. So when it really comes down to it in terms of performance, all you got to ask yourself is, am I going to be doing heavy, heavy stuff? Then you, you don't even want to consider the S9 Plus when it comes to like, oh, I'm going to run my entire YouTube channel off a of phone. I mean, you could consider S9 Plus, but you'd be much better served with the better video editing apps on here. Are you gonna? Are you saying I want the best graphic games? I want all the best gaming I could do on a phone. You don't even want to consider the S9 Plus because the devs definitely develop first for iPhone, and you get better performance and better optimization on this device. Now, are you saying I'll take a little bit of a slight, slight, very slight hit in performance to have all the features set in the amazing variable aperture camera? on the S9, then you definitely want to consider this device. Are you saying to yourself, there is no way I do all that stuff on a phone. All I want my phone to do is some quick email, some Instagram. I want to take some photos. I want to play the light casual game here. I just want to watch some Netflix and watch a YouTube video. Who's got time to be video editing on a phone? I got a laptop for that. Then this phone should definitely be on your high list for phones that you might pick up between these two. Okay, so let's talk about special features. Now, what you get here is Face ID and gestures on the iPhone 10. That's what's special about this device. You also get iMessage, which is kind of special about all iPhones that allows you to communicate with a lot of people, you know, who are using iPhones, which is kind of, you know, there's so many people using iPhones that you might actually miss iMessage if you go to a Galaxy S9 Plus. So that's what really matters here. The security is super strong with that Face ID on the iPhone 10. So those are the special features there. Now, the ones that really matter here for the S9 is going to be the intelligence scan, which now combines the iris scanner as well as the facial recognition together to give you a more authentic and faster way to get into your phone. I actually found it to be a little bit non-responsive. Um, you also get, you know, this Samsung Pay on this device, which works with MST technology, meaning it works on any card reader basically that can read cards. This phone will work. That's a great feature to have with this device. You also get that variable aperture camera on the back of the Samsung. Now you do get Apple Pay with the iPhone 10, so keep that in mind, but the technology is nowhere near as reliable and accurate as the one on Samsung, especially when we're talking about using it at multiple stores. Now, if they do have their machines set up, of course, Apple Pay and Samsung Pay are on, on par, they're equal. But where they're not equal is that you can leave the house and know that with the Samsung, you're good to go pretty much anywhere. With the iPhone 10, you gotta go look online to see a list of stores that accept Apple Pay. So overall, they have basically an equal amount of special features. I'm sure if you dig into the S9, you get even more features because that's what Samsung does best, features. So if we're talking about purely, you know, stuff you're going to find in terms of the feature set, Samsung is the one you want here. Okay, guys, so let's talk about the cameras here. Now on this device, you do get a dual 12 megapixel camera, f 1.8 for the primary lens, 28 millimeter, 12 megapixel, 2.4, 52 millimeter on a second, optically stabilized phase detection, autofocus. This does have the ability to shoot in up to 4k at 60 FPS, 1080 at 240 FPS slow-mo, so super slow-mo. You do have some new portrait modes in the iPhone 10 that are new here, natural light, studio light, contour light, stage light, and on the front camera, you do have a seven megapixel shooter. This thing does F2.2 on the front. We are having a little bit of lag there as it was switching into the front portrait mode. Also something different for the iPhone 10, you get the front portrait mode. You also get 1080 at 30 FPS on the front face detection, which will track your face quite well, and it does have some pretty great autofocus. Now, in terms of the settings themselves, they are basic iPhone settings you are used to, time-lapse, slow-mo, video, photo, portrait, square, 
Pano. You also get your filters on board here up in the right hand corner, timer, live photos, HDR, and flash. But you still have to go into settings to change the file format as well as change those video settings, which can be annoying from time to time. However, I find the detailed photos to be very amazing here on the iPhone 10 and the front facing camera specifically I feel is a better choice over the Galaxy S9. Now on the Galaxy S9 Plus we're talking about a dual 12 megapixel camera. The single primary shooter can actually change its aperture from f1.5 to 2.4 giving for some sharper photos and some great low light photos as well. That's a pretty awesome control you have over your camera. Very pro and you have dual pixel AF on this phone. You also do get an f2.4 52 millimeter lens on the second one at one over a 3.6 inch sensor. So the sensors on both of these are just smaller than what you're gonna get in a full blown DSLR or mirrorless. And that's simply why you still can't beat those cameras is the sensor size. That is the main reason why a smartphone camera cannot compete yet. Or I mean, it can compete, but not beat the camera. Now in terms of software, you do get so much software here, but it's pretty clean and easy to use, I would say. Although it could be a little bit daunting to first time, you know, Galaxy users who are used to the more simple UI of the iPhone 10. You have Pro Mode and these are a little bit sensitive, so sometimes you might accidentally trigger the wrong one. Live Focus is going to allow you to blur the background to your liking. Pro Mode, well, it says it in the name. It's a Pro Mode. You can change the aperture right here. See how I just did that accidentally? You can change the aperture from f1.5 to 2.4 right there. And you have shutter, exposure, all that stuff. And you can also go to super slow mode up to 960 frames per second. This is ridiculous. Sony did this first, but now Samsung has it. So it's nice to have it here. Although it's pretty blurry and you cannot do it for too long. And in addition to that, you do get 4K60 on this device as well. And I find the settings to be much easier to use on the Galaxy S9 and I like the autofocus speed. It's faster than the iPhone 10. Settings are right there for a quick fly. You can also quick launch this camera like so at anywhere you are on the phone. You could just double click the button to launch it. So it's a fantastic camera. I think that the burst mode is a little faster on the iPhone 10, but I'm gonna stop talking right here. You go ahead and judge the cameras for yourself. That's it. What'd you think? Which one was better, the iPhone 10 or the Galaxy S9 Plus? I'm going to tell you how I feel about them. So the S9 Plus is the one I would choose for personal use because I feel like it produces those photos you just want to share right away to your social feed. They're very vibrant, beautiful, and they're just like wow factor kind of photos. Now on the iPhone 10, this is the phone I would use for professional photos where I snap the photo, I go into Lightroom, I go ahead and edit my photos or I edit my videos. The professional will probably like the iPhone 10's accuracy more than the Galaxy S9's more vivid, but not super realistic looking, you know, photos. So that's how I would say it here. Now, in terms of video, both of them are pretty close and evenly matched. So you really got to decide if you can deal with the 10 minute shut off time on 4K for the Galaxy S9 Plus and the five minute shut off time for the five minutes. So if you want video to continuously keep rolling forever, you definitely want iPhone 10. But that expandable storage makes it really easy to transfer your files here for the Galaxy S9 Plus. So keep that in mind. With the Animoji, you can see his face moving because I am talking and it does definitely does not look very accurate. Let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. But he definitely doesn't look very accurate. That's not what I'm doing with my eyes. And you can go to this little bunny rabbit mode and you go to this little bunny rabbit. You can do these like little, you know, other stickers. I don't know what these are, but they look kind of weird. So I don't know, but you have a bunch of stuff you can customize and put a little hat on me while I'm recording this video, a little gangster hat, and then go over here and see how that just triggered. Sometimes that happens. I told you very sensitive earlier, this devil. I mean, why would you want to use this thing? That is super creepy. Like I wouldn't use that. So going over here, you can see that we have all these functions. So, you know, you have a lot of stickers and stuff that can be fun to play with, but I think just the NR AR emoji, it just doesn't feel very premium like the one on the iPhone. That feels like they spent much more time making it. And I'm just going to stop here with that. We don't need to see that no more. Personally, I don't really like it. It's not that great. Um, it's cool that it's something new, 
but it was just rushed and it doesn't feel in place on this very premium smartphone in the Galaxy S9 Plus. All right, so let's discuss audio. So the iPhone 10 we all know doesn't have a headphone jack. You know, it's old news by now. Some people think, why do people keep bringing up no headphone jack? Nobody cares. Bluetooth headphones are everywhere. Some people are of the opinion that why would you get rid of headphone jack and they still like their headphone jack. That's why phones like the V30 still exist. But I would say right out the gate, you have dual speakers here, finally, on a Samsung phone. At the top and at the bottom here, a little bit of a different design element on this phone. Um, you do have them here on this device as well, but they're just louder and crisper on the iPhone 10. So if you want external speakers, you definitely want the iPhone 10 here. If you do want to use the headphone jack, you have the Dolby Atmos feature on this device, which should help it sound just a little bit better. So I would definitely choose this if you're a headphone kind of person. You want the Galaxy S9 Plus. In terms of phone call speaker quality, you're definitely gonna like the iPhone 10 because of the louder speakers, but when you wanna you know, just plug your headphones in and talk on the phone real quick, you're definitely gonna want this because you're not gonna have to look for a dongle like you would on the iPhone 10 to find you know your headphone dongle and then put your headphones in, unless you're gonna just use the lightning headphones, but not everyone's gonna use the lightning headphones. Okay, so let's talk about phone calls. Now, I find that the iPhone 10 actually doesn't have a better phone than the Galaxy S9 Plus. Now, reason being is I found it to be a little bit louder when listening to people on the S9 Plus, a little bit crisper. And I found that the iPhone 10 just had sometimes of a you know hard time people hearing me they said what what a couple times so that's how i can base this you know comparison here uh like i say if you want a better speaker phone you definitely want the iphone 10 but both of these held reception just fine reception is great on both but buying either phone this is we're to the point now where but we're just nitpicking here and basically not everybody's gonna have the same you know service the same experience but personally i just found the iphone 10 to be just slightly worse than the galaxy s9 when it comes to phone call quality all right so let's discuss battery life now on the iphone 10 you do have low power mode which really helps you out when it comes to longevity in that battery life i find this phone to be not as good as the iphone 8 plus but still an all-day phone it's just not a 1.5 day phone it's still not a two-day phone it's about eh, let's say a six hour of on-screen time phone the galaxy s9 plus actually kind of matches the iphone 10 they're about even in my experience when it comes to the battery life but i find that the iphone 10 if you are using it heavy Heavier, it does drain a little faster whereas the galaxy s9 has a better it just seems to work a little bit better when it comes to when you're using it heavy or light it kind of just drains evenly so the iphone 10 can do can drain kind of like fast depending on what you're doing whereas i feel like it's a little bit better balanced on the s9 plus so fast charging comes on board with the s9 plus you can get fast charging on the iphone 10 but you got to pay extra for it. it doesn't come in the box which most people aren't going to do you also get wireless fast charging on the s9 plus so overall i would say i would pick the s9 plus when it comes to pure battery life and the features and conveniences that come with that battery life but stay tuned to the channel i am going to conduct an all-day battery test with the s9 plus i already have done so for the iphone 10 which you can check out at the link in the description all right final conclusion which is the better phone here now they both have their strengths and weaknesses but i know you want to hear a definitive winner there really is no definitive winner it comes down to ecosystem you want to be an apple land or samsung and google land but i'm going to give you a clear answer i would personally choose between these two the iphone 10 and i'll tell you why now i'm going to choose the iphone 10 here of these two phones for one simple reason when you're paying a thousand dollars for a phone you know the s9 plus 850 with tax you're looking at around 890 depending on your region you're over a thousand bucks not everywhere is the same price you're gonna get cases and all that that's all gonna add up but a year is gonna go by and how many software updates are you gonna have with the s9 not very many now on the iphone 10 you're going to keep getting updated. you're going to get new ios 12 you're going to get more updates more updates apple is not going to leave you in the dust I'm not saying that because i just approve of apple but i just like that feeling that you know my device is being supported for a long time but that's not to say the s9 plus is no chump this is one of the best if not the best android phone you can buy so if you have no interest in apple this is the phone you want right here i think i would even choose this over the pixel 2 xl just because even though that's going to get software updates and google is not going to leave you behind you just can't beat this hardware this is just so much phone for the money you're paying and definitely you i feel like i get more money more bang for the buck out of the just the pure feature set and hardware of the s9 but i just feel like over the long term, the investment will pay off a little bit more on the iPhone 10 and the resale value will be much higher. So 
Personally, between these two, I think the iPhone 10 is the better phone, but it's never been closer than it is here in 2018 between Apple and Samsung. I